Hi guys, welcome to Being Wendy. My name is Wendy, aka Mama Dana, and I do videos on motherhood, lifestyle, and anything that I like telling you guys about. So if you're new to this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that bell button to get notified anytime I post a video. So if you're new to this, oh, I've already told you that, yeah. <laughs> What's going on? So today I just want us to talk about um, the sleep routine and how I achieved a good sleep routine with Dana. However, before I get to that, I need to change my clothes, don't you think? Yeah, give me a second. Ooh, that was fast. Yeah, I'm a genie in a bottle. <laughs> okay, so yeah, today we're talking about um, sleeping routine and why I feel like you need to have your child in a sleeping routine. So if you're watching this, probably you're having problems with sleeping with your, uh, your child is having problems with sleeping or you figured out your sleep routine and you just had to check a few boxes here and there or you just enjoy my videos for all those you belong here you really do belong here so first things first i'm going to say this um so first things first i am going to say this um it's achievable it's for every mom and every child should go through like sh do need to have like a sleep training schedule you need to know this and that to help you with a little thing so a few of the benefits from my experience not things that i've read from my experience is that there's enough rest for mommy and for the baby so when your child is up late till like midnight or 1 a.m and probably they're toddlers they're terrible too it's crazy they're probably up and they're not even um i was about to say polite about it they're not even um calm or they're trying to rest they're just very um, irritable. They they annoy a lot. They test your patients. Um, it's the stage where they're just like all in your space. You want to read. They want to read with you. You want to do something. You want to work. You can't. So I understand the struggle. So it's enough rest for you, and enough rest for the baby. Baby will sleep early. Wake up early. That's good. Best for everyone. Yeah. So it's something that you need to um, really push for. Um, another thing is that it increases your productivity as a parent because sleeping late, waking up early or waking up late sometimes is not good for you and your body. Sometimes when you sleep late and you wake up late, you just wake up lazy and probably won't feel like doing things, especially during this time of quarantine. It makes you feel like, let me just keep sleeping, man. let me just stay in bed all day, let me not do nothing. I want to do this, but mm, I don't feel like, let me just stay on my phone and things like that. Nah, nah, nah. We're not allowing that. As, as parents, we're encouraging you to be a bit productive. Not completely, but try and be a bit productive. Have your day, um, do something in your, with your day. Don't just stay in bed. So yeah, it really does increase productivity for myself. I'm able to attend my classes. I'm able to um, read extra. I'm able to make time for you guys. Such things, because I've been able to put Dinah in a schedule that favor, favors me and favors her. Perfect. Um, this is entire uh, enough time for you so when i say you time i mean there's enough time to just hang out with yourself and just maybe read a book watch a movie or just stay in bed in peace no noise before bedtime or during the day there's time for you and there's enough time to bond with your partner if you're dating or if you're in a marriage or whatever you have a partner and this partner is just as important as your child and if your child is going to be staying up late with you guys there's no bonding time for partners completely and even if there is it's very minimal because you the child sleeps late you're tired you need to wake up tomorrow you have work you probably never have time to bond with your spouse and talk to them things like that so you need to work as a team to realize ha ha ha, ha wait a minute we need to get this kid in um in a schedule so yeah um it's really good for to have just enough time for yourself and just th think things and things like that so this at when kids are young, they develop really fast. Their brain, uh, their brain develops very fast in their nervous system. So it's very important for them to get enough rest so that um, they develop when they are easy, like when they're relaxed. These are things you can Google on Google, and you can see more and more reasons on why you should have your child in a sleep schedule. But those for me is what I've, I've been seeing. Like yes. 
I'm having enough of me time, I'm having enough rest, I'm sleeping early, I'm waking up early. Like I have so much time for myself so that I'm putting I'm I'm scheduling in things that I feel like are important to me and it's been working. Honestly, it's been like three, four weeks, like a month now of sleep training and it's been amazing. So for us what made me want to sleep train was because I never rested enough. I was too tired, I was losing my mind at night. I want to just chill, I want to read a book. I can't because Diana is there, she's in my space and things like that. And so I called a few of my friends, I was like, guys, so we have a young parents group, if you don't know, now you know. We do have a young parents group where we just text on WhatsApp, talk about things that affect us as young parents, and it, do, it does have that. So the thing about this is, um, for young parents, um, people might think you don't have this together, you're not equipped to be a parent, things like that. And I'm here to prove you wrong, young parents raise amazing children just as the older parents. It's cool, we can do it. So yeah, so I texted the group and I was like, guys, I'm really struggling with sleeping. Can you guys give me a few tips here and there? I need to be able to put them in a schedule. And guys are like, you know what? So everyone was giving me their tips and then yeah, all that. So we did that and then I took what I could and then I figured things out. So these are my tips from people, from reading, from practicing. This is something I've practiced and it's worked for us. So you need to get a schedule that is for your spe child specifically. Not it's it's not written somewhere that oh children should be waking up at this time. Mostly. No, it's something you can come up yourself and realize okay this is something um, I want to do and things like that. So you come up with a schedule because your child is our children are different. So for Diana she's almost three years. Yay, three months. Old. Yes. So then it's about three years old and it's um. We can only have one nap in a day. She gives two, she can't even have two naps, even force her, she cannot. So one nap is enough. And for us that one nap is like a two hour nap and nothing more. So it's a one nap. Um, yeah, and then, so what we do, so this is then her schedule. Let me give you then her schedule. Wake up latest at eight. When I say latest is then I will be up by seven, seven thirty, eight. So yeah, latest is eight. Give her five hours to play, eat, do things, color, things like that. 1 p.m. I start trying to put her to sleep. She might sleep at 1, she might sleep at 2. So I give her two hours. Latest she has to wake up is 4. Latest is 4. I give her another five hours. I put her to bed at 9 p.m. That's actual, like, that's our day. We start putting her in bed at 8.30. We try, we sing, we do this, we do that. She's down in bed at 9. The good thing with Diana is we don't have to really um, hold her or anything. I trained her way early from when she was younger. I never used to just hold her all the time to sleep. Sometimes I just put her in bed and tell her, Mama, we need to sleep. And then I'll sleep to her and then she'll sleep. So now it's actually working to my advantage. I just put her in the bed. I tell her, Mama, it's bedtime. Good night. No phones, no nothing. It's bedtime. She says, okay, Mama, good night. Good night and love you. Bye. And that's it. So she might sing herself to sleep. She might talk until sleeping. But you need to like, yeah, that's what I do. That's me and Dana, it works for me. Find something that works for you. Maybe you hold your child to sleep. If that's how you guys do it, hold them to sleep and start early, put them in an environment, create an environment that's going to, yeah. So the develop a routine for your child and just your child, don't copy anyone. So that was for Dana because of the age, age, age gap. Yes, so another thing is create an environment where they're going to be able to actually sleep. When I say this, it means your schedule might change. Your routine and your, the things you like doing might change. So there's no way I'm going to be putting Dana in bed and myself, um, I'm in bed and I'm using my phone and telling her to sleep. Nah, it's not going to work because the kids are going to copy us and emulate us. So you'll end up shouting and shouting and shouting. And guy, this child is coping exactly what you as a parent are doing so you need to also put the phone down switch it off if you need to put it on silent and then lay down with your child as if you're actually going to sleep and if you can go to sleep yourself the better if if you don't want to sleep at that time well and good no problem parents don't have to only sleep with the ch children at the same time so put them to sleep create an environment where they can't sleep i tried all sorts of things i tried putting this rain rain sounds on youtube and all things <laughs> my child did it was crazy. It was just crazy. I was crying. It was insane. But yeah, so for us, it's no phones. 
because I have two kids now. It's Moses and Dinah. So Moses is a bit older and he's so used to going into bed with his phone. So I took the phones, not the phones, but the phones. So I took the phones and I said, no more sleeping, like no more sleeping with your phone. So phones are not of bounds in the bedrooms and that's it. And we agreed. And so that's something we had to do, creating an environment where they're going to have to sleep early. I also did this for Moses because Moses has school and I need him to wake up early without being um, woken up. So he wakes up at 7 on his own or 7.30 and starts class at 9. This is enough time for us to prepare him, feed him, give him everything and then set up class for him and things like that. That's perfect. So when I also say your schedule is about to change, it's also um, the thing about um, you might have to wake up earlier. For me, it was a sacrifice I was willing to deal with. If I'm going to sleep early, I'm going to wake up early. Well and good. More time to be productive and amazing. And my child is going to be perfect. For me, that was, yes. So I do wake up early and I do sleep in earlier. I can't be up past midnight and I can't be asleep past 8, period. So most days, it will be wake, I'll be wake up at 6 or 7. And then when I'm really late, I wake up at 8. So very few times, like on the weekends, I allow myself to wake up at 9, 10. And it's okay you can also have those days where you allow yourself to just sleep and it's cool so we've decided uh we're developing a schedule for our kids by creating a good environment for them to be able to sleep so number three is when you're in a place where like for me i'm raising my child in my parents house so it's very difficult to raise your kids with your parents because everyone has their own way of how they've raised you they have a way of they've raised you and then you have a way of i am raise my child like this i understand this is how i was raised you take what you like you throw away what you don't like and then you modify it so that's what i did so the thing is i had to have a conversation with the people in the house I had to talk to the nanny I had to talk to my mom my dad so i tell them we're not allowing the kids to have phones in the bedroom and you need to comply so if i say no phones you can't be allowing them to go with the phone period. We need to be on the same page here. We need to be on our team. You can't be working with your spouse and your spouse is saying opposite and you're saying opposite. The kids will look for the easier way out and then go listen to the one who is giving them what they like to hear. So you decide with your partner or the nanny, whoever's in the house, that this is how we're going to do it. Dana has to sleep in the afternoon and that's how we're going to do it. If she's not sleeping in the afternoon, please don't put her to bed past four, period. So if Dana does not sleep, have her afternoon nap, She's going to stay up till um, 8. And because she's tired, I'm, I'm going to feed her earlier. And by 8, I'm putting her in bed. She'll be asleep by 8 to 10. That's it. So we had to agree as a family. This is how we're going to do this. And it worked. It really worked. So when you're all a team, everyone in the house is a team and we're doing this together, it's going to actually work. Number four, consistency. If you start day one, day two, day three, don't stop. Keep it up. Keep it up until the time they'll start getting it. And they will get it. They're young. It'll you take the max two weeks. For us, it's two weeks of hell and tears and everything. And guess what? We did it. Now I just put Dinah. She can sleep up to four, but I put her in bed at nine. She knows no phones. She knows. She knows. Tell her mommy it's, good. it's bedtime. She says good night. I love you, mama. Good night. And she's gone. Evil. Even if she would sleep at that time, let them stay in the bed switch off the lights and until they get used to the idea that you know at this time i have to be asleep so for me that was it it works so consistency you have to be very very consistent can't stop won't stop you keep going and you keep going yeah so um this is something my partner had to talk me into he told me um baby you need to be very stern with her because you're the parents you don't, you're not supposed to allow them to do whatever you, they want. So it's for you as a parent coming and say, yo, I am the mommy here and we need to work this out and you're the one who's going to see. So when mommy says something, you need to obey because it's for the good of everyone. So as a parent, you need to be a bit stern. It's not that you are and say, hi, I was to watch TV. Nah, be stern, be firm about your decisions. Follow them through till the end. And that's the only time your kid will see how serious you are. And they're going to follow through with it. So be very stern with, I've said it's better and it's better. You don't have to shout. You don't have to beat anyone. But please, um, it's also part of the disciplining process. Discipline your kids. They'll be able to listen to you and understand why they need to do this. Because, yeah, 
all that so please be stern and be firm with your children so that it's it's going to be easier for you yeah it's going to, you're the mother you're the parent in this relationship you're the guardian in the relationship you're the older person they need to be listening to you because you know what's best for them and yeah it will just cultivate a relationship of respect it's not fear such as disrespect the fear and do it anyway so you can do it please make sure your child is in a sleep schedule so that it's going to be easier for us i've told you all the benefits of this i really told you everything however um thank you so much for watching this video don't forget to like comment share and subscribe to my channel if you haven't and we'll see you on thursday so bye never had a girl serenade you like this before i bet you never had a girl serenade you like this before Kinga, kutoka kwa mishale ya mapenzi, hey I can tell you the man So yeah, that's another thing, that's point number three